29 straight and 22 straight. It doesn't take very long to figure out who's one and who's two, does it? Flat, cuts in front. Lassick would go in, making it, do you know who? 20 to six Alabama. You know, trying to find that Heisman form. Instead, he kept finding tied defenders. George T goes high stepping in, 31 yards out. Bama in command, 31, 27 to six. Toretta, his mind boggled by this tied defense, the top in the nation. He hurls deep to Lamar Thomas, one of the fastest receivers in the nation, caught from behind by Teague, who strips the ball. And a spectacular play that went for naught. Bama was offside, but it was that kind of game for Toretta. Thomas couldn't believe it. It all slipped away. One of the cockiest teams in the country got handed its lunch, 34 to 13. Lassick jumping for joy, and why not? He scored twice and was part of this shower given to Gene Stallings, who didn't start off well at Alabama, but has now given them a national championship, just like the old Bear days, and in classic fashion, 34 to 13. Bama now leads the all-time series 14 to 3, snaps the nation's longest winning streak at 29 in a row, and they now have the longest winning streak in the country to themselves at 23. Not too many people thought it could have been done, but Bama has done it. They have beaten number one uh, Miami, and thus they have won their seventh national title. And now we send it down to the Crescent City, New Orleans, where uh, Chris Fowler and company are standing by. Chris? All right, Bill, Gary, thank you very much, and welcome down to New Orleans. We're in the shadow of the Superdome where Bedlam is about to break out. Roll Tide, yeah. the phrase in the nightly course. So Gene Stallings, he coached the two national championship teams under Bear Bryant as an assistant. Now he has his first national championship, and if the Bear is watching somewhere, he'd recognize this kind of football, old-fashioned Alabama football, great defense, a great game plan. And in the very building where Muhammad Ali, maybe the greatest of all time, reclaimed his title from Sphinx, maybe the greatest Miami dynasty, greatest in the history of football, is dethroned by Alabama. Lee? A little bit of trivia here. Alabama has now won the national title in the term of every Democratic president since 1961. 61, it was Kennedy. 64, it was Johnson. 78, it was Carter. And tonight, 92, Bill Clinton. Clinton's not in yet. He's in tonight, but he's Alabama fans, boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> On the subject of boxing, oh, this was also the site of the no-moss fight. Yeah. Leonard Duran, and by the time this one was over, it was a no-moss. A physical whipping up front. Let's take a look at the Alabama running game, because that was a key. Dennis Erickson's worst scenario, Alabama could run. His team could not run. He told us that before the game, and this is what turned out to be reality here. Watch the block. Martin Houston, the fullback on the lead block, seals the left side. Lassick will bounce outside. Slips a couple of tackles. Gets face mess. Gets out of the goal line. There was a bad call and an unsportsmanlike. Eventually a field goal on that drive. Now, watch Houston once again level a linebacker. This time it's Darren Smith. Lassick slips by him. Again, makes guys miss. Gets down near the goal line. Houston once again will zero in on Smith. The backers from Miami, very quick, but not very big. And they were handled all night by the Alabama blockers. And again, that one of the keys, 107 yards rushing for Lassick in the first half alone, Lee. It seemed like to me that the Alabama offensive linemen and defensive linemen were, were bigger and stronger and more physical, and they just ran right over the Miami defensive team. We talked about the, uh, the pressure. Now, uh, here's more running from Lassick. Okay, this is a counter trap play with uh, Roosevelt Patterson leading him. The offensive line coach, Jimmy Fuller, deserves a lot of credit. Also, the defensive coordinator, Billy Oliver, who set a sensational game plan of blitzes. There's George Teague, the safety, knocking Toretta down with Eric Curry jumping around there. Meanwhile, Gina Toretta did not have a fantastic game at all, but did not have a terrible game. The pressure of Alabama up front, I think, a factor. It's not going to show up in the stats. They didn't have a lot of sacks, but Lee, they did get to him and force some bad throws. They got a lot of what they call hits and scarums. They came from all angles. I never thought that they would blitz them like the way they did. Keep your eye on Toretta's eyes. The Alabama secondary were playing our, his eyes all the time. Number 31, Sam Shade intercepts that one. Now watch Tommy Johnson on his second interception by Toretto. Keep your eye on Toretta's eyes. You notice right there? He's looking at the receiver 100%. So is Tommy Johnson. He comes from nowhere and intercepts the football. Again, three interceptions, all based on Toretta's eyes. Watch Toretta look to the receiver. Instead, George Teague, who's playing zone, jumps up in front of him, takes that. All three of those touchdowns, either three touchdowns, either led the interceptions or worked by those turnovers. That's a big play, but they were all watching Toretta's eyes and jumping to the 
the ball. And a great story. Talk about unsung heroes in Bing games. Michael Johnson doesn't even start. Really started the last part of the season because Chris Donnelly got hurt. He strips Lamar Thomas of the ball, makes the key play in the first half. Then he grabs the interception that sets up the touchdown for Bama to go up 20 to 6. Now, I want to go over to the Superdome now. Tim Brando standing by with a guy who had a big ball game tonight, David Palmer of Bama. Palmer, David, we have said you were an explosion waiting to happen, and the explosion happened the first time you had an opportunity to catch the ball. Yes, you know, I, I think I started the team off right on a good note, you know. Then we went down and got a field goal. We should have got um, seven out of it, but um, we, we fought back and always you know, put, put some points on the board. We knew we could put some points on the board, and we went out and did. Were you surprised that your offensive line dominated them as much as they did? Well, no, I wasn't surprised. We, we knew we could do it, so we went out and did it. You know, we practice every day just like they do. They put their pants on like we do, and we went out and uh, won this ball game. The trash talk is over. The title is yours. Congratulations. Yes, trash talk is over. It's right there. Congratulations. Thank you. David Palmer, let's go back to Chris. Tim, thank you. A great evening for that guy. That's such a disappointing season. The off-the-field problems, the arrest for drunk driving, but it all is a race tonight as David Palmer, again, has a very, very big ball game. Lee, let's talk about Palmer's punt return, which really set the tone. Bedlam in the Superdome after that punt return. When he happens on Palmer, you'll notice he's got great acceleration on the ball. He gets the punt return, and he takes off, and he uses his speed and gets to it right here. Watch. Boom. He goes into second gear, makes a nice little movement to the left, and that, ladies and gentlemen, that sent the tempo because everything was kind of quiet then, and boy, that gave Alabama a lot of pride. We thought that the specialists might make a difference. The kick returners, Kevin Williams from Miami, David Palmer for Alabama, the ex factors and what we thought was a pretty even matchup defensively palmer drew first blood there set the tone williams did make a big play but by that time the game was over big edge david i know no question about it what it did is it psychologically gave that alabama offense which was suspect boy it got a good field position and he went in the score i don't know if alabama came into this game feeling they were suspect mine it comes out with the cocky attitude all of the ex players were here they thought they could give Miami a boost. They went into the locker room. Dennis Erickson left before the game. They tried to pump up Miami, talk about the dynasty, but Alabama just played a very poised, composed game from the outset. Well, it looked like to me that one group of guys had something, and the other group wanted it more than the guys wanted to keep it. That, to me, looked like the whole thing. What had Alabama just went out and took the game and the title away from Miami? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was Alabama secondary players against the Miami receivers. It was a mismatch, and we knew that might be a key match. Let's go back now to the Dome. Tim Brando with more post-game reaction. Antonio London, congratulations. Your defense was always changing. Tell me about the defense. Hey, it was great. We had a great game plan for the... Uh... Miami offense, they talked a lot of noise all week long. I believe Langham said it best. They were talking a lot of trash. And they couldn't, they couldn't Congratulations. catch. Congratulations. Thank you. Number one. Baby. Got it. All right, Lee, some final thoughts. Yeah. The king is dead. There's that a new right. king in college football. It's Alabama. Last year, a couple of years ago, I said Alabama's football team looked like a high school team. <laughs> Today, they look better than anything in the National Football League. Roll Tide. And Stalling said his team might be a year away in the first day of 1993. He was right. He has a championship. <laughs> There's still a very young team. All right, from all of us here in New Orleans, that's it for now. Let's send it back now to Sports Center, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Chris and Lee. A couple of notes. We still now have had only three back-to-back -back national championships in the history of college football, and that's now six straight times that number two has beaten number one when they met in a bowl game. So Alabama had a little bit of history. I guess congratulations to uh, Norm Hitchkiss, right? That's right. Who predicted that Alabama would beat Miami, and they have for their seventh national title. Uh, once again, congratulations to uh, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. And uh, they're hooting and hollering down on Bourbon Street. That's going to do it for this. Unfortunately, it's not on many newsstands, so this could be your only chance to get a trial subscription. Make a record. Call now. I'm John Sullivan with CNN Headline Sports. Alabama is the best team in college football for 1992. The Crimson Tide, George Teague, picked off Gino Toretta and ran it back 31 yards to the end zone. Teague was also involved in the game's strangest play. Toretta back to pass hits Lamar Thomas, who races for what appears to be a touchdown, but Teague catches him from behind and then strips him of the ball before finally getting knocked down himself. But Alabama rolls to a 34-13 win and a perfect 12-0 season. The Canes fall to 11-1, the MVP of the Sugar Bowl, running back Derek Lassick, who scored two touchdowns for the tie. I thought it was going to be a three-point game, really. And, uh... Uh, three or four points at the most, and uh, but we made things happen. We got some turnovers, made some plays, got some returns, and uh, 
Yeah, not many people are going to dominate Miami like him. We just happen to have a good night. Florida State beat Nebraska 27 to 14. And like the Sugar, the game's most exciting play was brought back because of a penalty. FSU's Hamrick Vanover, the sensational freshman, goes 90 yards on the end around for six points, but it didn't count. But the Knowles got plenty that did. Quarterback Charlie Ward, two touchdown passes. FSU goes to 11-1 with the victory. Nebraska falls to 9-3 with their sixth consecutive bowl loss. At the Cotton, Notre Dame picks Texas 28-3. Irish QB Rick Myra, two touchdown passes. One a 40-yarder to Blake Dawson. Texas A&M falls to 12-1 with their only loss of the season. At the Rose Bowl, Michigan was in the good hands of running back Tyrone Wheatley, who scored three touchdowns on runs of 88, 56, and 24 yards. The Wolverines go 9-0-3 with a 38-31 victory over 9-3 Washington. At the Blockbuster Bowl, Bill Walsh's Stanford Cardinal beat Joe Paterno's Penn State Nittany Lions 24-3. Cardinal quarterback Steve Stenstrom, two touchdown passes, including a 40-yarder to Glenn Milburn. At the Fiesta Bowl, Syracuse used a little dipsy do to beat Colorado 26-22. Kadri Ismail on the kickoff return gives it to Kirby Dardar. Dardar says bye-bye as he goes 100 yards down the sideline. The Orangemen go 10-2 on the season. Colorado falls to 9-2-1. In the Hall of Fame, Tennessee downs Boston College. Georgia beat Ohio State in the Citrus Bowl. Southern Cal coach Larry Smith is forced to resign. The Trojans lost to Fresno State in the Freedom Bowl. NHL, the Devils had a bad day on the ice. Coming up on College Football Preview, the National Championship. Miami and Alabama, two unbeatens in an undisputed brawl for it all in the Sugar Bowl. But we've got much more, like a cotton picking good time for Lou, but an agonizing way to ring out the old for AM. Nebraska and Florida State squeezing oranges. Can Bowden be 